Hey you folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to a follow-up to my Let's Try of the Elder Scrolls Legends. If you haven't seen it already, you'll probably want to watch, watch the first video where I introduce a lot of the mechanics and deck building and so on and so forth of, um, of this new CCG. But I promised that I would do a follow-up video where I do an arena run. Now, I have not done this yet, but um, it seems, just based on the description that I'm seeing here, I'm going into this completely blind, it feels like, okay, it's probably going to feel in some way similar to the Hearthstone arena system. But what I'm interested about is a couple of things. Um, first of all, how does the class selection work? because the entire basis of deck building and, and quote-unquote classes is completely different in the Elder Scrolls Legends than it is in Hearthstone. Um, additionally, I quite like the fact that there are two arena modes, because one of my things is, well, I do, I have a lot of time each day to play video games, because that's my job, but I don't have that much time to play one video game. As such, I don't have as much time to play something like Hearthstone as I would like, and I've fallen behind on the meta and understanding the card pool and so on and so forth, and that tends to lead to um, what StarCraft players originally termed, well, I don't know if it's originally from StarCraft, but that's where I see it mostly applied, ladder anxiety, where you feel a lot of anxiety before you go and, and ladder, and a lot of times it stops you from starting in the first place. And that happens to me too, but I love still playing these games. In particular, I like playing them against the AI. So the idea of this solo arena, which is presumably just playing against the AI, is gonna be super nice for people who are a little bit more casual. So as we've discovered, you can enter the arena by spending gold, or you can use it using an arena ticket. You do get one arena ticket for free as part of uh, completing the campaign. And you do have to complete the solo arena before you can play the regular versus arena. So we're going to go ahead and do that using my free ticket over here. Otherwise, you can pay money for a ticket. Okay, so you are going to need to pick a class. And what's interesting about this, again, unlike something like Hearthstone, is one class is actually a combination of cards from two attribute pools. There are five attributes in this game, and you can all decks are built using a maximum of two attributes sources of attributes so each deck is a mix of two although in theory you could pick say mage over here and only use willpower cards which is the lion-headed one over there but you know you might want a combination of the two there are also neutral cards you can include here so hmm, what are we gonna go and do here I'm trying to think of the different implications the willpower ones tend to involve a lot of creatures that buff each other um this i mean obviously a lot of magic and indirect effects might include a few other buffs Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll go Archer because I don't think we've really demonstrated that. My own decks, um, the, the deck that I showed in the first video, uh, was I think was it Endurance Magic? I think so. So this should show an entirely different set of cards from the little test game that I showed you before. So we'll be an Archer over here. So strength creatures, very powerful creatures, but more or less direct. And then agility one out maneuvers its foes with nimbleness and speed. Uh, that does mean I, you know, a few more damage effects and things. So we'll see how that goes. But sure, that that this seems fine. You know, there's probably some synergies that are better than others. In particular for arena play. So we're gonna have to pick. Oh, only 30 cards. That's quite interesting because the regular decks in regular modes have a minimum of 50 cards. But here it looks like we're only going to be going up to 30 cards in total. And so 30 picks, pick from one of three. Uh, this is a unique here. Oh, sorry, it's not a unique. It's a legendary rarity. It doesn't have a gem at the top. Technically, you can have up to three of this. You can have up to three of any card unless it's a unique card, which will have a gem up there. So this is normally very rare. It's interesting that it's not all the same rarity level here. Do I want to use the Wood Orc Headhunter? 5-4 for four, 4, Breakthrough, which means if I kill something that, say, has, like, 2 health, then the extra remaining 3 damage from my 5 will be applied to the enemy player. Summon, give Wood Orc Headhunter charge if you have another friendly Orc. Alright, obviously that's going to require a fairly combo-rific deck over here. I like this, it's only 4-4 four, four for 5, and compare the stats over here. It doesn't have Breakthrough, but you do get to draw 2 one, one Nord Firebrands. Firebrands are, are free. There's zero casting cost, 1-1 one, one with charge. So this is effectively 6-6 six, six worth of stats for 5. And two of those stats are actually charge. I kind of like that. Drain is interesting. It is a lifesteal thing, but it only applies on your turn. If someone attacks Moonlight Werebat, you don't get the drain effect. But the prophecy is quite nice. Um, on a 30-card deck, assuming the hit points in the actual... Um, arena matches are the same. So we start at 30. It means there's five runes that get broken. When you lose a ruin, you draw a card. 
Um, and if it's prophecy, you get to play it for free. So in theory, this is five shots of um, sort of one in 30, uh, assuming it's, you know, whatever, to, to pick that up. Prophecy cards are potentially going to be very strong in the arena. Still, I think I'm going to grab the Marcus Bannerman. I think that's a great pick there. And continue looking until you've made your deck. All right. Um, so Shadow Shift, that's quite interesting. It's a spell, it's an action. You cast it, it moves a friendly creature. It moves it from one lane into the other lane. And also draw a card. So worst case scenario, I mean, it's you cycle, which thins out your deck a little bit, which is quite nice. This could be very powerful in certain situations. Uh, I'm not a fan of things with only one health, even though 4-1 is kind of potent. It does have the prophecy effect. 3-2 two for 2 is great stats. I'm going to grab this, though, because it's going to be potentially quite fun to play with. We got another one of these guys. Um, plus 2, plus 2 if you have another friendly orc. Yeah, I wonder if I could have rolled the dice and just gone for an orc deck. Fire Ramp is interesting. It's only 1-1 one, one for 1. And when he attacks, though, he does deal 2 damage to the opponent's face. So he's sort of like a 3-1-ish, but not really. Hmm. Do I want to take this guy and, and risk the orc thing? Looks like orcs really band together. This is the second time we've seen an orc. Since I don't know the depth of the card pool, I don't know how common orcs are going to be. Maybe building an orc deck is a great pick. I don't know. I think, you know what? I'm going to risk it. Let's try. There's another orc with prophecy. Yeah, the 4-1 orc with prophecy. Ravenous Crocodile is interesting. 3-4 for 2 is great. But when he comes into play, he deals do damage to a random friendly creature. I think it's random. You might you might get to target it, actually. Got a goblin. Goblin, this is a 2-1 on your turn for zero, which is okay. But we'll go and grab the orc. We'll do we'll do an orcish deck. Here's a Nord 2-3 summon. He gets plus one, plus one for each destroyed enemy rune. So the later in the game you summon him, the stronger he gets. 5-5 five, five for 6 with breakthrough. I think I'm just mm, trying to figure out, like, mana curve. I mean, he curves out a little bit better, but he's kind of... He's not very temporific. Does get stronger later on. But even with one rune, he's a 3-4 three, for 3, which is okay, but not, like, super impressive. Late in the game, he comes in, he's really, really, really strong. But late in the game, you have more mana anyway. Um... I like cheaper cards, though, but I'm not convinced by this guy. Just doesn't feel that valuerific. I don't think Breakthrough is very important. I mean, Breakthrough doesn't get you board control. Tell you what, let's get the 3-5. I don't know, maybe you can help tank or something, or I, I'm not sure. Another Orc, 2-3 three for 3, but he's got Charge, which is very handy. Uh, destroy an enemy creature if you have a creature with higher power. I like that a lot. I mean, Direct Removal is really good. We need something with higher power, but that... I could just drop... Like, my turn five play could be drop a Greystone Ravager, cast this. But I need... I need a creature that's got higher power than the card I'm killing. Hmm. Which is probably fine. But you know what? I'm just gonna get another Orc. Orc, Orc, Orc. Orc, Orc. Prophecy Drain. After Elver, Elder Centaur attacks, give it cover. Oh, that's quite neat. So especially if you cast it to Shadow Lane, it comes in with, with cover. And then every turn it attacks, it keeps getting cover over and over. Uh, two, five for three? With breakthrough, and when he takes damage, he gains plus two, plus so. Two, five for three by itself is actually a pretty good set of stats. And potentially, like, his stats get better. Breakthrough is not very useful when he's a two, but it gets better later on. I think I'm going to take the Nord. Excellent. I do need some cheaper creatures. Guard is okay. Oh, and the last grasp effect. So she replaces herself. There's another orc here. I, I've got to give credit to the orc. Since, you know... I mean, we've only got one orc that gets buffs from other orcs, but maybe we'll get another one. Um, I do like this. A lot. I mean, it doesn't help my tempo at all. Protect some things. Alright, let's go orc. Whatever. It's fine. Breakthrough charge. He's only 3-2, though. Breakthrough is not that great without this. He'd have to get buffed to really be worthwhile, I think. A wood elf in an orc deck? Can you do that? 3-1 for 2. Summon. If there's a wounded enemy creature in this lane, it gets charge. Okay, so really what this creature is, it's almost always uh, pay 2 to kill something. And that's not bad. On the other hand, an improvised weapon at the right time could really make a difference. But I think this guy's fantastic. We do need things a little higher up. 
I don't think the Ravenous Crocodile fits very well in our deck, though. I don't think that's very combo-rific. Um, I don't think we need a free Goblin. I think, because this is a 2-1 on our turn. This is a 2-1 all the time. For the one mana, I'm going to be okay with the Enraged Mud Crab. Plus, it's hilarious. We've got another Orc over here, but I really like the Skaven Pyromancer. 2-3 three for 3. Same stats, but instead of charge and being an Orc, deals 1 damage to all other creatures in this lane. Oh, including friendly ones. Which if I don't use it incorrectly and kill my Greystone Ravagers, is a good way to activate my Fearless Nord... Uh, Northlander, Fearless Northlander. All right, we're going to throw you in and see how it goes. I like the Maple Shield a lot. 1-5 with charge is interesting. Mm, I'm going to skip that. I'm actually going to grab a Maple Shield because I think it could be quite handy for us. Raiding Party. So this gives you... The Nord Firebrands themselves are free. So this is a three casting cost that gives you two one ones with charge. You get to choose which lane they show up in. You can split them up. You can do whatever. And it's okay. I don't want the burg the bog lurcher. That's for sure. Territorial vipers another pay for kill anything, is what this is. And I think that's the kind of removal we're gonna have in this deck. Pay for destroy target creature is what this is, unless there's a guard creature in the way. Uh, the Bandiri Cruiser, or Bruiser is very nice. Like, he can get quite fat, but he's a little squishy. I think I like the Heavy Battle Axe. He's cheap, though. I don't have that many threes. Lurking Crocodile. Actually, he's not bad. He's a 3-2 two for 2, and you might be able to draw him as a Prophecy, and he gives us a little bit extra 2 casting cost stuff. We don't have any items, though, and dropping this at the right time deals wicked amounts of damage. We do have... Do we have anyone with Breakthrough? We do... And we have chargers, so turn 7 play could be drop this with a heavy battle axe and do a huge amount of damage. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll get a chance to get other 2 cast and cost stuff. Nord Firebrand, the Ravenous Crocodile, again, deals 2 damage to a friendly creature. And if it's not random, I guess he can do it on himself. At worst case scenario, I guess he's a 3-2 two for 2, which is interesting. Oh, at the start of your turn, give another random friendly creature plus 1 plus 1. I want the Shaman. We'll call him an Orc Shaman, let's pretend. So there's another possible way to kill people. It's not great. Afflicted Allet is a 3-1 for 2 that deals 2 damage to each player. I mean, if you're going for a full aggro deck, that's quite nice. Not sure it's great for us. A 1-1 guard that gives an enemy creature minus 1, minus 1. There's a good chance he could potentially kill something. He only leaves you with 1-1, but he can guard something else. I like that. We're going to grab you. Rather than the minus 2, minus 2. Prophecy guard. On your first turn, reduce... Oh! So he's a 3-2 for 1 if you have him in your starting hand. After that, he's a 3-2 for 3, which is certainly a lot worse. I'm not a big fan of this dark guy. That's not terrible with the Prophecy, but you know what? Let's put in the Goblin. Goblins and Orcs, natural combination, right? That's a lot of fun. It's a permanent plus 2 plus 0 in Breakthrough. That is another Orc, I will tell you that, though. But that has a lot of possibilities to swing some huge turns for us. 3-1 for 2, comes into play, moves a creature to another lane, um, and he does have Prophecy, so you can play him for free at the right time and maybe shift some things around, which is kind of neat. Do we need another Orc? We don't have much, we actually don't have very many fat creatures, although this can sort of make fat creatures in a different way. Three times. And is a kind of a good way to keep some of the other creatures relevant. Um, if I got more charge... Like, if I got those charge creatures... I mean, I've got the, the orcs here, but I only have the one. Um, hmm. And actually, putting this on the 4-1 so that the breakthrough overcharges into someone else could be very, very handy. I don't really need the guard. I guess I'm seeing a, a trend here with the red creatures. They tend to be more power-heavy than defense-heavy. I don't know which way is the right way to go. You know what? Let's just play with the Skirmisher's Elixir. It'll be fun. Arrow to the knee. I, I can't not take this. Although, I really think the Shadow Shifts are potentially really, really powerful to manipulate the board, especially since you get to draw a card. It's a cantrip. Enemy creature loses guard. We can live without that. A lot of times, this will kill a creature. Shackle, I don't care about. But, and it's arrow in the knee. I feel I've got to take it. But I want to play with more Shadow Shifts, and I think that, I, I like that. Well, that's quite cool. It's a 3-3 three, three for 4, but when he dies, he summons another 3-3. Three, three. This is another Orc, don't get me wrong. But holy crap, that's that's a lot of stats. That's 6-6 six, six worth of stats for 4 points. 
I can't say no to that. Same thing here. I really like that. There's our Nord with charge. Yeah, no, we're going to take this. Okay, we could use some really fat stuff, but again, he doesn't... This not does not strike me as particularly fat stuff. Battle Mage. If he's equipped with an item, he gets plus three and guard. We've got a maple shield, and that's it. A heavy battle axe as well. I don't think the Skirmisher's Elixir counts as a potion. Do I really want to put this in my deck? The chance of drawing it from a prophecy... Well, I mean, it's not that bad in such a thin deck. But, ugh. Ravenous Crocodile, though, is has got a good chance of killing most of our stuff. We don't really have the combo with the Fearless Northlander because the deck's not big enough for that. We do have two items. Honestly, it's a thin enough deck. This combo might present itself often enough. And he's still a 3-3 three, three for 3. Maybe we'll get another item coming up. Mm, not yet. I do like for pure damage. He's... She still protects one of your other creatures, and with two power has a good chance of killing something. Okay, let's get the arrow in the knee, because it's arrow in the knee. Burn and pillage, I like the name of it. Deal one damage to all enemy creatures for each destroyed enemy ruin. Whoa! Okay, that is an amazing late game card. So this can do, depending on when you cast it, well, at the very start of the game, it does nothing, but it's also six, so you're never going to cast it early. By the time you cast it, it's probably going to do two or three or four damage to all enemy creatures. That's too big to ignore. Mage Slayer can't be damaged by actions is kind of cool. But here is a dual color card. Cost eight for a 5-5. Five, five. Summon. Destroy all wounded enemy creatures in this lane. It's only one lane. It needs them to be wounded. I got to go for Burn and Pillage. That's too cool. That Goblin, that Imp... Zero one, draw a card. He cycles your deck. I'm actually more in favor of this than anything else. I like I like things that cycle. He's obviously not very temporific, but he's a good late game, game draw. He's fine as a prophecy. I don't know. The imp is better for just burning people down. And we do have a pretty aggro deck. All right, let's go with the imp. I like this guy. He's only three one for three, but coming in dealing one damage is very handy. More charge, gives cover. Cover's not the sort of deck we're building. I'm going to go for the Huntsman. I like dealing one damage directly. It's very handy. Another one of these Battle Mages. I suppose if we have a second one, it becomes more likely that we'll hit the combo. Okay, one one for one that deals one damage. Free on Prophecy. He gets fatter with every damage enemy ruin, which is quite nice. Oh, wow, this is a tough choice. I do like dealing one damage. Often lets you clear the board early on. Like, or clear one thing, which is often clearing the board, honestly. I still like this. Still don't have a ton of items. But our combo is, get this guy enchanted. We've got two items and two of him. Let's do it. And again, we might get lucky with another one. It's another guy who deals one damage to everything in the lane. The 1-5 charger. Gets fatter. I'm going to get one of these get fatter guys. Ah, there's another orc. 3-2 two for 2. Friendly orcs in this lane have breakthrough. Very nice. I do like this because it's permanent as well. Move that. No. Orc Clan Shaman. We got another one of these Reavers. Which does work out nicely. Honestly, if we did get a couple of those dudes that do damage to everything in the lane. The Pyromancer. Or the Braftwood Ambushers. Prophecy and deals one damage to all enemy creatures in this lane. Just enemy creatures specifically. We can get another Fearless Northlander, which wouldn't be bad, but I think the Embusher could actually do huge damage. And we need a little bit more high-end stuff. And again, I'm not... This one's a little awkward. It's not bad. It's still 5-5 five, five for 8, but I think this works a little bit better. So, relatively cheap deck. Fairly aggro-ish. Not necessarily... Enemies await you. Whoa. Must be faced last. Whoa. Take on the others in any order you choose. Pick an enemy to begin. So, Solo Arena is like Mega Man Arena, is what this is. Pick the order that you challenge things in. If you do lose three times, you're out. If you kill all four, all eight of the normal dudes, then you fight the boss. I'm assuming Versus Arena is much more similar to Hearthstone. This is cool! Um, I don't know. I'm going to go for one of these with willpowers. They tend to probably, they should have more masses of small creatures that buff each other. We have a lot of sort of splash damage and things. So let's find out. Let the game begin. Indeed. 
Quill, the Untouchable. Oh yeah, you get um, you get titles for getting achievements. Untouchable is a title that you get for winning a game without ever taking damage. I'm going to put the Prophecy card back in the deck. I'm going to put you back because you're not that impressive and you're a little higher. This isn't bad. He'll probably kill another creature when he comes in, even though he's not that potent. But he's going to, like, stat-wise he's not that potent, but his minus one, minus one is going to be most potent early in the game. And he's cheap. There you go. And the Murkwater Butcher is cost one on the first turn. So obviously I'm going to start with him. And because there's no one on the board, I'm going to put him in the non-concealing lane at this time. What a great little start there. Excellent. So next turn, I could coin out the Skaven Pyromancer. Oh, you just shackled me. That's kind of annoying. Um, alternatively, without coining, I could put out the Murkwater Witch. Minus one, minus one, that thing. This thing will have guard which will force it to attack this. I could put out the Greystone Ravager maybe on the side here by itself, where it can likely do some damage next turn. But I can always... This is the Concealed side, too, which means these four ones are actually a lot more powerful in this than in Hearthstone because I can guarantee them one turn of Concealment. So, you know what? I'll just put out the Witch. I could coin out the Pyromancer, but I think that makes no sense. And target you. And go. There you go. Two four guard. That's kind of annoying. Oh, hello. I think that's fine. I'm going to coin out the Skirmisher's Elixir. And then use a charge of that. To trade that. And actually do one splash damage because of the breakthrough. I think that's fine. 3-3 three, three, and reveals the top card of the opponent's deck. Okay. So if I had a card that depended on me having... Oh no, because I'm going to draw it no matter what. So he knew what I drew. Yeah. Friendly orcs in this lane have breakthrough. We could deal one damage to everything else. I could just drop the 4-1 over here. Which I'm kind of tempted to do. I think I'll let him like maybe develop more stuff over here. So I can do this. And give you breakthrough. Alright, I like that. Oh, that includes himself! Ah, uh, yeah! Oh, what did you do? Oh, he piercing javelin me! Alright. Oh, uh, yeah, we need to save you for an item, ideally. Uh, this is permanent, it's not one turn, so I can turn him into a 6 1 with the breakthrough and start really beating on the face over here and put him on a clock. And then, I guess I could just put down the Pyromancer here. It's only going to hurt one thing. But then they can just trade and that'll be okay. It's not a very effective turn. I'm not going to burn and pillage at this point. Well, I mean, okay. Let's do this. Let's give him, it's going to break a rune. Could be a prophecy card, it's not. Okay, so this now would do one damage. Yeah, I think I'm just, I could just skip my turn and wait. It feels dumb. He might not trade right away. If I put down the Battle Mage, now he should, whether he will or not, whether the idea AI would or not is questionable. I don't want to skip my turn. I want to play more aggressively, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Ah! Oh, Ice Strike deals two damage directly to the opponent and then draws a card, which is very nice. He got himself a Prophecy card. Oh yeah, and he's my activator for that too, which isn't great. Um, let's see here. If I just attack here, it'll do three damage, which will pop a rune. Which means I could then burn and pillage, which would kill that, but it seems a little crazy. But I'm going to die here regardless, so I'm going to attack here. And I'm not going to buff you any more than this, so... Uh, although I could bring you up to 8, which would do 5, yeah, it's still not going to pop more than one rune. Well, that's not true, because I could attack here. I could get in a situation where I pop two runes. And really gain nothing from it. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to bop this guy. Because that'll actually let me put down 
the battle mage say. I'll put down the, uh, the Northlander. That's going to be okay. And attack there. And that'll be good enough for now. I'm going to save this for when the plus two plus oh would let us do a good trade. So again, you're going to reveal a card for my deck. Okay, you know that I've got that. Ooh. I guess it would let you know that a prophecy card is next. So if you attack me and broke a rune right now, you'd know I'd draw a prophecy card. That's kind of interesting and not something I'd considered. Hmm. You're going to get breakthrough regardless when I do this, but yeah, we're going to do this anyway, even though you've got, you've got breakthrough already, but I wanted the more damage so we could kill that, activate you, and then we need this to die so you can't kill it in response. So we need to pop another rune. Hope you don't get a prophecy card. Use this, or we could protect you with the guard creature. Actually, that's probably a lot better. The forest is my strength and my courage. I tell you what, I'll put a battle mage on the other side. Okay, I like that. So the uh, the Nereid can't kill this, although you can shackle me, I guess. Oh! Alright, you get a 4 7. That's not terrible. But if I break a fourth rune, then I can burn pillage for four points, which is perfect. So, let's do that. Drops another rune. Burn pillage for four. And drop down a Reachman Shaman. Um, I don't think it really matters. No, over here. Start of your turn, give another friendly random creature. Plus one, plus one. By over here, there's more There's more targets. you got to pick and charge, choose a bit more. Portcullis, well, we can burn through that. Okay, that's a lot more annoying. Portcullis with a steel sword. I guess they just, like, welded it onto the front. Actually, that plus one, plus one is kind of handy. Because this guy will survive. It will kill off our fearless Northlander. But I think that's okay. I'll kill you where you stand. Die, scum. I'm ready for anything. And then go for face. Oh, Prophecy card. Gain 5 health! Aha! Doesn't save him. That's pretty annoying. Oh, interesting! You didn't... That seems a little weird, that you wouldn't kill the creature. And you do have another guard one over here, so you will survive. Depending on what I draw. Thank you very much for the plus one, plus one. God, that's useful. So... Perfect. Drop you. Charge lethal. Bam. Good explosion graphic. And that's 8 damage. GG. Seems like the game's a little bit loud. I'm going to bring down the volume just to scooch here. Get some XP. No reward for just playing. Oh, now that's interesting. That's very interesting. So now I'm going to have a 31 card deck for the next one. I'm adding a common card. So in a sense, this might weaken my deck. Although, I do need a bit more high-end fat. I think the 7-5 is actually a pretty good fit. I do have to say, I like these 3-3 three, three with guards a lot. But I kind of want one more fat creature in here. I think that's going to fill out our deck a little bit better. And you do get... Yes, thank you. Um, you do get a sense of how your deck is performing as well, and what is missing at that point, too. Alright, let's try a completely different feeling deck. We're going to go Strength Endurance, which honestly I think is a really bad fit for us. I think it's gonna, there's likely that they're going to have the kind of creatures that would counter us pretty well, but we'll find out. I think we're going to have to put a cut after this match. What? Okay, well, I'm going to replace you and you. 
Try to get something cheaper. Mm. Oh, makeshift defenses. Okay, so we still have a field lane and a shadow lane. I have a zero casting cost guard creature I can put down. I could pad it up even more with the maple shield. In particular, it's going to be really nice with the Reachman Shaman. I'm wondering if I even delay putting this down. And I think on the next turn, I go something like Reachman Shaman, makeshift defenses, and then put the maple shield probably on the defenses. Because it should get the buff from that. And I can put them all in the shadow lane, depending on opposition. Okay, I'll play nothing this turn. I mean, I could put this down now, but what's the point? Okay, he's playing an orc deck. So yeah, that's tough enough that the best health I'd have is 5 health on the defenses here. And there's a good chance that he'll get something else that can help burst through there. Yeah, so I like plan this plus that. And... Now, I could put the shield on him to make him less likely to die from spells. But I think it makes more sense to just make him more protected and just hope that this gets a lot beefier. Although, shit, I just drew the Rihad Battle Mage. I should have saved the shield for him. Come on, sir. Me. Yeah, I should have done that. In fact, I suspect this is going to go quite poorly. It's going to get plus one, plus one every time we summon an orc. I want that. I think I should shackle this guy. Save myself a little bit of damage. Although, it's only the last hit point that matters. And in fact, if I let him hit me, it'll increase the rate at which I get runes. I guess I could put this here, and then bop him after, or maybe draw a card. Right now he can't kill me. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I didn't attack. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm hyper-focused on the wrong things. Yeah, that's really bad. Burn Pillage is going to be quite good. So I could go for rune damage, but I think I've got to trade a little bit over here. I don't have an item. Yes, I will drop this down. And actually, by doing this, I ensure that the buffs from the Shaman keep applying over here, which is good. Okay, but I should have done three more damage before. He'd be at 21 right now. Watch me just lose by that. It only It's only an AI, but oof, not paying attention is painful like this. Alright, this guy's gonna get really, really, really buff. So I drew my Highland Lurcher. I can't put more stacks on this guy, but... That's risky. Oh, when he attacks, I get two 1-1s. One oh, I misread the card before. I don't have another Orc right now, so I don't want to put down the Bakore Butcher. Do I have an orc? No. If I put him in this lane, well, then the 2-8 can basically just kill that, which is unpleasant. You know what? I think we drop this guy down and get some more Nords. He can't kill me yet. I could put another charge on here for more damage. That's what we're going to do. It does give him two cards into an empty hand, which is a bit unpleasant. And puts a lot of weight on one creature, but I'm not really expecting... Oh, that's terrible. As I was gonna say, I don't think there's direct damage, but... Cast out is a pretty good way to counter all the buffs. Okay, we are setting up for a big burn and pillage, though, but it's actually not going to help that much. Is 
Actually, I'm going to do this first. And then that. Oh, my hand is full! Okay, so we found out a hand limit, which I didn't know before this. So, now we can burn and pillage for four. Followed by a Nord Firebrand that bops you. That's pretty good. And we'll make this 6-6 six, six next turn. Um, do I want to put it on the, the makeshift defenses? I don't care about this guy. I could put one over here to tank, but I don't have to rush to do that. I think I'm just going to hold on to the makeshift defenses for now. Can't kill me as is, but you know what? Let's make sure he can't kill me. Friendly Orcs of plus O oh, plus 2 ongoing. Silence of Creature is actually very annoying. Uh, but I can do 8 damage this turn. Okay, so despite the fact that I made multiple horrible mistakes. So again, I'm going to do this to prevent him from drawing a, a card now, and then go for lethal. If I did it the other way around, he could have potentially drawn a card from the Broken Rune that would have given him the ability to kill my 2-2, or put down a guard or something like that. Okay, barely salvaged that after making some horrible, horrible, horrible mistakes. And we get to an end of the card. I like Fireball, and I think it combos well with um, with my uh, Gratwood Ambusher and the Burn and Pillage. I don't think I need the Afflicted Allet, although I am playing a relatively aggro deck. Yeah, I'm going to grab the Fireball. Okay. So, thanks for watching. I'm going to continue this as a sep and next episode. We're going to break this up. I think it's, in, depending on how the run goes, it might take three or four. It is a... It is a damn shame that I screwed up so badly this time, but at least it didn't go... Um, at least, you know, it didn't punish me too badly for it. Because that was like a series of mistakes. I missed an attack. I missed the opportunity to drop a buff on my, my buff combo guy. Really, really bad. But we, we barely scraped by in the end. One turn away from defeat. <sighs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.